Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome. So today we are going to be doing the next uh, Warner Pacific episode of uh, the Mariana's Play by Email. I'm going to actually open the game in full screen and then we don't have any issues actually. So I'll go back in just a second, so forgive this. There we go. Luckily it's very easy just to switch it over. So we were starting to see some pretty interesting things last time in the last time of Mariana's campaign. Uh, of course, we did have a little bit of issues with uh, our own submarines, especially as they run over into, well, towards Iwo Jima. <laughs> but oh well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at it and see how we are going to get on this turn. Now, the issues we do have carriers close by. We did put some night combat air patrol on our air, well, aircraft carriers, the combat air patrol indeed. Uh, hoping that is going to make a difference and that we will not see anything too bad. We'll see. We do have the carriers going back towards the north, towards Pagan, actually, so ideally that will possibly uh, catch him unawares. It's going to be interesting. I don't know what he might be thinking as to where my invasion target shall be. I'm hoping they will not know that it's going to be Pagan, but we'll see. Okay, so we've been spotted by reconnaissance there. We do see a number of ships there. Okay. Japanese ships. So we did spot some midget submarines though, which is to be expected. Angler's suffering some issues though. She ain't exactly cracking. Okay. So we did have the AP there that uh, collided with the AKA uh, some days ago at this point there, but they did manage to reach into a talk, which does mean that those men do survive, which is very, very good news there. A collision like that at sea is very dangerous. Right, Japanese fighter bombers, E-13A1 Jakes. Okay. Midget submarines are spotted beforehand, uh, motor gun boats. Level bombers over there. Oh, I'm sorry, no, there's a landing barge. He must have been using a landing barge just to transfer troops. Yeah, so you can see that we did bypass a lot of the Japanese submarines over there. Periscope's okay. Good, so some of our aircraft on the search patrols are attacking as well, so it's a good thing. Uh, the good news is because obviously we've been running consistent reconnaissance over the Mariana Islands. Uh, we do tend to have fairly accurate strikes due to the fact that we do have that detection level, which is very, very good. Okay, we hit a midget submarine there, which is quite good. Hitting those midgets is very nice. Right, air strikes. Okay, that's rather intriguing event. So, we don't actually see any airstrikes as such. Indeed, we do not. Okay, quite a quick turn there, actually. Could have been significantly different, but actually not too bad overall. It looks like we might have caused some damage, obviously, using the search aircraft, but uh, overall quite good there, quite good. So we'll move shortly on into the orders phase, and we'll see what we can do here. It's not too long now until we actually get to the point of the operations, well, of the actual amphibious operations. So we'll go over here and take a look. So we're looking for six, yep, minor problems, major solutions, turn 15. So we'll go ahead and take a look in here. Now, I think we're about two, three days away from the actual landings of Pagan. Let's go ahead and take a look then. So we'll start with the operations report then. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Angler first. She's obviously over here. a little bit of flotation damage there. Hmm. I'm going to have her return, perhaps. We do have a size by port over here, but do we have anything really of worthwhile? I've got the 7th USA uh, the USA AF over there as well. Naval Construction Battalion, at least I'd have some potential uh, support there. There's a USN Base Force 2. 
Unison Base Force, Aviation Base Force might be better than Kwajalein. Um, hard to say. I think what I'm going to do then is keep them on standby around about here. I'm going to have them probably move out to this further patrol pattern. The reason being uh, take her out of the actual danger danger areas. Well, dangerous areas. Okay. Plenty of ships over there. Yep, so it looks like the weather played a big part here. Yeah, thunderstorms over this way. Ah, this is good news. Okay, so he's not aware of some of these forces. He's aware of the Guam force, but not the entirety of the Guam force, which is good news. We have the raiding groups over here. We also do have the amphibious. We have ASW. There's the Saipan Amphibious HQ. Right. See, now the question comes down to, do we actually send these uh, raiding groups out there? Yeah, so we're quite low in fuel. The good news is we do have an oiler uh, group, which isn't too far away at the moment in time. Yeah, these guys are very important over here. Tinian London forces. I might go in with the Saipan landing force. It's one of those that it might be like a sledgehammer to crack a nut. But we do have a size free port valve, so I could really expand upon that. Obviously, then it comes down to the distance there, and what distance are they? Right, we do have the Oilers over here. So, what I'm going to do then is we'll tell them to meet the task force of 3-8. Uh, Right, refuel. I'm going to send them all to tactical refuel. The reason being we can't exactly drink the oilers dry as of yet. Got to be careful. Once I do have uh, some of these forces refueled, we'll be able to move out. But that's looking fine. I could do additional oilers as well being moved out. We do have plenty of destroyers over here. We do have some replenishments over here as well. So these guys have just finished up, which is excellent. Yep, I've got some additional oilers over here. Now, currently they're unloading, which is not exactly what I would have wanted. So I'm going to have them load that fuel. Still a decent amount of fuel there, isn't it? 59,000 units of fuel. Right, Growler's over here. Have her disband so she can ideally go and uh, some repairs. We'll go ahead and take a look over here. So ships and then we'll talk. Ships under repair. Okay, so she can receive some repair. There's no shipyard here. So it's only the systems damage that can be repaired at the moment. So I can place her under the actual pier side. And at least she'll have that done a little bit sooner. But the major damage I really can't sort out. Okay. You're going to head out over this way. You're just going to take some additional fuel out there. Remain on station. Low threat threshold. There we go. What I'm going to do here then, so... Replenish from the port. We're going to begin to actually send out these raiding forces now. The reason being, I'm going to try and clear some of the waters around Pagan. And other areas such as that. Right, so I'd like you to go ahead and follow Task Force 90.
There we go. Sort of them in groups of four as well. Follow nine zero. The reason is I'm gonna like place these destroyers out there in small groups such as this. And these destroyers are very capable of looking out for themselves for the most part. There's not too much that the Japanese can really particularly do to touch them. Okay. So what are we looking at in terms of distance here? So we're going to go with the Guam Landing Force. Guam Landing Force is going to go all in on this. I'm going to have... Hmm. See, these are older battleships, actually. I'll probably retain the battleships alongside the actual uh, carriers, to be fair. Considering that the AA complement of the actual heavy cruisers isn't as stupendous, but they still have decent enough guns for the bombardment. Okay, the AAM is a very low in fuel. What I'll do then is detach them. Well, then again, they're probably still going to come in handy, but it's one of these... Uh, Hmm. We're just going to go for it, I suppose. I could have them assigned to a different task force. So what we'll do then is have them minesweep in. Actually, the DMSs can stay in there. Okay, what we'll do here then, replenish it C. They've probably taken some fuel from elsewhere there. Well, Guam Landed Force is more than likely going to be there in about two days at most. So what we're going to be doing here then is we are going to be parking ourselves somewhat off the coast over here. The reason being, we're going to go about just completely dismantling anything around here. Uh, but what I'm going to do here then, I do not want to be moving in a straight line as such. So what we'll do then is we'll set the destination over here. But what I'll do then is set waypoints. So I'll head over this way. Then back. Then head to our actual position there. Okay. Now we're going to clear your patrol. You're going to be sent to a similar location around about there. We're going to set the waypoints here. One closer. Actually saying that, getting closer probably isn't the wisest idea. And that'll work out fine for me. So we do have our submarines around Iwo Jima now. Combine them in there. Their job is going to be, um, well, they can follow them for the time being. Yeah, follow three seven. Then just before they arrive, as in like just about to unload. Uh, we'll have them split off, and they're going to be just... They're going to be about uh, one hex off of the actual landings. They don't want to be actually involved in the landings. The beautiful thing here, though, is we do have aviation units ready to go immediately, as soon as we take the island. Or even before we take the island as such, just to get them down there. They're going to bring additional supply, but we have a 38th aviation over here. 
So yep, aviation support. Additional support is always a very good thing to bring as well. Now we do have the uh, amphibious core headquarters over here, which is very nice. Get that set there. Uh, to be fair, they've still got their plan for Guam. I'm going to leave it as Guam. Though saying that... It does make you wonder, really, doesn't it? Do I want to go in there with a plan in? If I go in there with a plan in, then I'm going to lose that plan. It's probably better to hold on to the plan in for Guam. Considering that Guam's going to be a hard challenge. And it is, yeah, I mean, there's like, what, uh, 38,000 troops over there? Uh, compared to, what, just under 10,000, around about 10,000 that we've seen over there. So, that makes sense. Okay. Additional forces over here as well. This is the Tinian Landing Force. It does make me wonder would it be worthwhile to take over Marcus, but it's not worth it. It's strange, it's almost like having too many assets to organize here at the moment in time. We're gonna get them out there. Bennett will be arriving soon in Pearl Harbor once more. My god, they eat a load of supplies. Let's see, we might be able to load some supplies and board the actual tankers here, just... Uh, so I can get some over there to Johnson Island. We'll have them escorted by some other units, but it would be nice just to get some supplies there. So they're docked up, which is obviously what we want there. Okay. You're on your way to Began. Yep, you're carrying additional forces over there. Uh, most importantly, we are carrying additional aircraft. So we have uh, mariners. Which is really very good. Be able to make use of those pretty damn quickly as soon as they arrive. But yeah, the way we're looking at this is basically as soon as those forces arrive, we need to make use of them. Okay. You're loading fuel on. Uh, in all honesty, it might be worthwhile just to get that fuel out there. I'm going to get it sent out there. Now, really. At least then I do have plenty of fuel to actually make use of. That's some superb range there. I'll increase the search. Same for the Avengers. Increase the amount of search. Retirement most certainly is not allowed. There we go. Weather is showing overcast, which is not too bad. We need to approach the area here. What I'm going to do here then is we're going to form up a new surface combat. So I'll have the Heavy Cruiser Minneapolis. Let's see, Minneapolis is New Orleans class. Uh, we do have a San Francisco, which is a New Orleans as well. So we're going to have the Minneapolis and the San Francisco. Now, we do have some Cleveland class Heavy Cruisers, which are... They are amazingly good. So we'll have the Birmingham and we'll have... Now that's a Cleveland, we have the Miami. So the Cleveland, the Birmingham. We're going to have a couple of destroyers. Okay, so that's about 10 ships there.
Okay. Your job is to follow Task Force 37. You are. Retirement allowed. Basically, I want to have some sort of surface asset there, just. Well, something on surface combat, just on the off chance. Um, but as far as it goes, I'm hoping he doesn't know what's going on. I have put a lot of the uh, submarine attention to the south. I'm hoping that he'll take note of that. I'm hoping he thinks that we're going to be uh, basically looking to swing in towards, like, Saipan. As far as I'm concerned, um, we can win a greater victory by taking Began and establishing control of the airfield there. Because once I have control of the airfield there, at least that does give me the ability to really project control over here. So we have a lot of aircraft that I could just phwah, flood the skies with there. We've uh, heard of the Marianas Turkey shoot. Now imagine the Marianas Turkey shoot where we're not just using carrier aircraft. We're also using land-based aircraft as well. That'd be very nice. The good news is it's like as soon as we get the uh, Marines on the ground, we do have additional forces to really make good of it. Uh, we've got a lot of support assets to come as well. The port is a size free, which is good. That means it'd be protected against submarines for the most part. It's a shame that I don't have any mine layers. I probably should have got some mine layers ready as well to go in there. And uh, that would have been like, it'd have been quite good, quite good level. It's got a minesweeper there. Submarine center, two destroyers over here as well. May as well have it sent out there on ASW. Make use of it somehow. There we go. Not the most elegant battle plan here. It's almost an issue of there's just so many units here. It seems as if Moonlight is... Um, I can't remember what it was last turn, but it's either increase or decrease, and obviously, which is a obvious statement there. And we'll see, we might reach about 100% Moonlight for the next turn, and then from that point on, obviously, Moonlight will decrease. So we might be looking at a position here where we arrive with maximum Moonlight vis uh, visibility at night. Uh, which is both good and bad. It's good for us because obviously we can, we'll be more effective at dealing with enemy submarines, which is good news. As far as I can tell, I don't think there's anything over here. Yeah, so that's gone down here. Issues these aircraft do have a lot of fatigue. He doesn't have a huge amount of aircraft around here. What I'm going to do then is increase this to 50%. Uh, so I've set all reconnaissance here. Right. And create it around Pagan. Pagan and Saipan. What's the range? 26. Yeah, I don't even need to operate at that sort of distance. Range to Pagan is 26. So no wonder they've had increased uh, amounts of fatigue there. But then again, uh, then again, I just think it's one of those things. They are, are technically operating their normal radius, so I think they should be okay. I don't think they're going beyond that. Okay, we do have some very powerful surface assets over here as well, which will be made use of shortly. But okay, there we go. I'm going to call that uh, pretty good. So we'll save a turn here. And send it back to, well, yes, to uh, Major. And let him get on with it there. Should be quite good. I mean, we're looking at about two, three days now. Maybe about, I think it's two days. I think two days and we'll actually see the landings unfold. Uh, which is going to be a very interesting uh, aspect of the game here. I'm going to have to go in there on Absolute. But what we'll have to do is obviously organize what we'll go in there with. Um, I think it might be that I have them going with the uh, battleships. 
I do have some AKs. Uh, AKEs, I do believe, in the support group. We should have checked that beforehand. Uh, which means if I could actually get them onto the island of Ganban, we'd be able to rearm for the most part, basically. Uh, more or less anything there if we have a supply, and etc. So I think we'll have the battleships going with the actual landing forces. Obviously, they'll provide that really, like, <laughs> beefy support there. That, on the off chance they are intercepted, we do want to have something that is going to be able to protect them as well. So I'd like to say a big thank you here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and goodbye for now.